all right my growers good morning welcome back to our channel so as you can see i have all our pesticide stuff laid out and as you can see it is a lot um but this is what it takes to keep our garden safe from those pesky bugs um so we're gonna go through each one and i'm gonna show you one thing we're gonna show you today with this one is mixing the kale um coal and clay not kale coal and clay mixed with the water i'm gonna show you how i do that i'm gonna show you our mixtures for the neem oil and then also for our bt caterpillar killer um uh, as you know we probably went our, already over a lot of these um, but we're just pretty much going to be going over the demonstration on how all these work. Um, so first things first, we're going to move this off to the side. Let's just move all this. So the first things I want to start off with is going to be our uh, BT Killer. As you can see, it's really green. It's supposed to look like that. This is the Worm Killers. We actually use this stuff is really good along with this stuff um, they are both really good together um, they help keep the pest away um, so with this one right here you are gonna want to use and I want to make sure I provide you with the correct amount um, so you're gonna repeat this uh, five to seven days after your first application and then it'll be it'll be four tablespoons per gallon um and that's for your shade trees and ornamentals for your fruits and vegetables it'll be one tablespoon per gallon and you'll want to mix this up with uh water um with this one um it is definitely different um, compared to the BT one. Um, let me, I'm trying to get the exact amount here because I want to make sure I provide y'all everything. And I'm going to show you the back of this bottle. So the back of the bottle has a whole booklet. It'll show you when to apply it, how long, even after the first harvest and that. Um, and so that's really helpful as well. Um, so for this, um, it'll be for per gallon, this is going to need four tablespoons per gallon. And if we're going by per cart, per, per cart, it'll be one tablespoon. And then per pint, it's half a tablespoon. Um, and you'll mix these two together. Um, you'll do it a gallon of water, mix it up. And then it'll turn into this greenish, yuckyish kind of color. And so I've really reused my milk jugs for these types of reasons. As you can see, it is a milk jug. But that is how we apply these two pesticides. Um, we're going to go ahead and now look over our neem oil. And there's a few things here. So neem oil, cayenne pepper, and eco-friendly dish soap no fragrances no chemicals inside it all natural that's what you're going to want to use on your plants as we are keeping our uh plants in that a natural pesticide um so with the neem oil you will want to do uh this makes up to 10 gallons and with this you are going to want to use two to three tablespoons of the neem oil along with two to three tablespoons of the Dawn dish of the dish soap eco-friendly dish soap and with the cayenne pepper I like to do three take uh, teaspoons of the cayenne pepper the worms in that don't like cayenne pepper so I will add that in every once in a while and I'll show you here with the jug um, and I gotta get you changed here so as you see, the bubbles here at the top will indicate if there's enough, if there's more neem oil or if we need to add more uh, dish soap. And let me see here. So you see that yellow line right across here, guys? That is all the neem oil. So before I have to apply this to the plants, I have to put dish soap in it. 
Um, so with this, I my I gave my mom some neem oil to use for her plants and that, and she accidentally put too much. So I am just going to add just a little bit here. That should do it. And I'm going to take it, shake it up. And the dish soap will concentrate that neem oil so that way it's not floating all at the top because you want this mixed up really good. Um, this jug was actually, as you can see, this was supposed to be, don't mind my writing, this was supposed to be my soul and clay jug. Um, but I ended up using it for the neem oil instead. Um, so you want to just let that sit for a few minutes. And if you see the yellow across the top here, you'll know you need to add more dish soap as the neem oil is still floating at the very top. So we're just going to go ahead and let that sit for a minute. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you my coal and clay mixture. It is going to be a two to three cups per gallon um, that you'll want to use. And so I have my gallon jug. As you can see, I didn't fill it up all the way. I learned last time that the coal and clay will make the water rise. Um, so let's go ahead and get this in. Um, so I tried to find uh, my funnel this morning. Couldn't find it. Um, I need to get a new one. I don't know what happened to it. I swear some things just grow legs and walk off. So what I'm using currently is just a piece of paper um, and rolling it up like a funnel. Um, and that works too as long as I just don't get the paper wet. So I got the paper rolled up here. We're going to stick this in here. And I just want to open this up some more at the top. So that way I have more room to put it in there. And so now I'm just going to get my scoop here. This is going to be one scoop, which is a cup. And I'm just going to put it in the top of this piece of paper here. And then I'm just going to work that coal and clay in there. And you'll see it as it goes in the water there. And just takes a little bit. It's going in there. As you can see, it's going in there. If I had an actual funnel, this probably wouldn't take so long, but no worries. We'll get it all in there. There it goes. As you can see, it's going down in there. And you won't have to worry with the coal and clay. You don't have to worry about getting it on any of your skin as it's not poisonous to your skin. I did read where you can bathe in coal and clay and it actually moisturizes your skin. So I did learn that about the coal and clay. I always wondered why anytime I did get it on my hands and that, and especially with wetting it, um, why it made my skin so soft. So I did learn that. Hey, no thank you. We don't need help here. All right, and I think I'm just gonna do two cups here of the coal and clay. Daredevil over here. All right, and we're gonna do our last scoop. Oh, I just made a big mess. All right, see, big mess. But it's okay. It's an easy cleanup. Oh, and I just made it worse. Okay, all right. So I got two scoops in there, somewhat of two scoops. I'm gonna just take this excess stuff I have made a mess, guys. I am always, guys, one thing with me, I'm always making a mess. So like, if you're making a mess doing this, it's okay. Everybody makes messes. Okay? Don't stress it. Don't, don't worry about it. I didn't lose a whole lot, so it's not like I spilt the whole container or something. And my coal and clay, I did order it off of Amazon. It was a two pound bag. Um, and so far, we've only had to apply it, uh, once and 
we do we apply it after every heavy rain because the heavy rain will wipe it out and knock it out um so now that we got the coal and clay in here let me just clean up the jug okay and now i'm just gonna mix it up and as you can see it's gonna look really milky um so let's get this all shook up here and as you can see you never want to add the coal and clay first before adding the water as all the coal and clay will get stuck to the bottom it already gets stuck to the bottom when i have the water in there first but i just shake it up from the bottom so that way it really mixes it up um now with the coal and clay guys um it will gunk up your nozzles and your sprayers so you don't want to leave the coal and clay in your sprayers um and after you use the coal and clay off in your nozzles and that and you spray your plants you're going to want to clean your sprayer and your nozzle out as this will leave some residue in the nozzle and it'll clog it up um i did learn that lesson learned the hard way i left the coal and clay mix in the sprayer and it clogged it up so i had to let it soak in hot water to get it unclogged um but this is what the coal and clay is going to look like as you can see we don't have any more uh stuff at the bottom um so it's all pretty much mixed up and with this you will notice if you just let it sit for a little bit um that the coal and clay will just sink to the bottom and it'll fill and you'll have all your water water particles here at the top um so we're going to get this applied here in a few minutes now that we got it all mixed up but before we do that i want to go ahead and show you guys the neem oil jug so you see here let's get it more in some light so you see a lot of the yellow line at the top that shows we need more dish soap so i'm going to just go ahead and apply some more here because that yellow is a, is all the neem oil we have at the top and i don't want the neem oil sitting at the top we want it all mixed together fine where we don't see any neem oil and it's okay if your jug looks milky um it's not milk it's just from the uh neem oil mixture so i'm just gonna mix this up here Alright, and so now I'm just going to let that sit and see if we have any more yellow bubbles come at the top. Let's go ahead and finish mixing this and we're going to go ahead and go get it on our sprayer so we can apply it to our fruit trees. Alright guys, so we're out here, we got our sprayer, we got all our stuff. Here's our coal and clay, I'm just going to mix it up some more. And then we're going to add it into our sprayer. And while you're spraying, you're going to want to make sure you keep mixing it up in the jug. So that way the coal and clay isn't separating from the water and you're not getting the clunks at the bottom. So you'll keep making sure it's all mixed up. Get all that in there. Right, that's good. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and put this on the top. Screw this on. And some sprayers, if you get the right sprayer, you see here mine has the end that comes off um, and there's the ending piece. So I just attach this on here. Real good. All right. Let's get to spraying. Alright guys, so we're out here at Linda. We're going to go ahead. I'm just going to go ahead and pump this. And just make sure we're mixing it. And now, with the sprayer, you want to make sure it's sprayed wide out. So we're going to go ahead and get this applied. And with the coal and clay, you'll want to make sure you do at least two to three coats. Um, so that way she's good and covered. So we're gonna get this in here. You also gonna wanna make sure you're spraying under the leaves, everything. You're gonna wanna make sure you get her all covered up 
in the coal and clay. Um, you don't want the pesticides or pests getting anywhere near the leaves, whether it's on top, underneath. Because even though you spray the top, doesn't mean they can't get to it through the bottom. Um, they will go through the bottom to get to the colon, to get to the leaves to eat on them. So we're just going to spray everything. Alright, so I'm going to set you guys off to the side and let you guys see from a distance. So we got Linda covered with her first coat. We won't do the second coat until later this evening. Let's go ahead and take care of the Satsuma tree. guys so we got the coal and clay on the trees I'm gonna go ahead and show you what they look like now so here is the mandarin train we got the the satsuma tree sorry guys so as you can see the clay powder is on the leaves um, we're gonna go ahead and let that sit we're gonna come out this evening um, and put some more coal and clay on them for the second layer um, and then this is what Linda's gonna look like we got her pretty well covered um, we just need to get a, get another coat, and then she'll be good and protected. She won't be able to have anything eat on her anymore. So that will be this evening's game. Um, so that is going to be our pesticide video, guys. I hope you guys got something out of it. I hope you learned a lot about pest controls and how you need to do your mixtures. Um, I hope you got a lot out of this video. Until next time, guys, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment down below, and don't forget to hit that bell so that way you don't miss out on any of our new videos. We always have new videos coming out, and we love having you guys around and part of our journey in growing our garden and that. You guys have a great rest of your day. Florida Garden Escape Channel out.